Here I have the fourth and final binder that I use to store my complete sets of Star Wars cards. Uh, this is definitely the most interesting binder uh, in terms of what I have in here. A lot of foils, the Episode 1 sets. Tatooine was the first set that I ever bought a booster box of, and I remember getting a lot of uh, very cool main characters in there, and there's lots of opportunities to get them. So Qui-Gon had been one of my favorite characters since Episode 1 came out, and I remember getting a, a regular image and an alternate image in the same box. And a lot of neat interrupts they mixed in here that went along the lines of dueling, so not necessarily just Tatooine in Episode 1, but had a little bit to do with the fact that, from what I've heard, Lucasfilm wanted Decipher to hurry up and get into the Episode 1 stuff faster than they did. But a small set, 90 cards each side. Remember getting a Darth Maul in that box too. I'm not sure if it was an especially good Tatooine box since there's only so many so many different rares in the set. But yeah, Maul and two Qui-Gons in the same box was definitely a lot of fun. Pod racing was pretty neat. Always tried to put together a pod race deck. Because that force force loss, making your opponent lose six force and you gaining six force is a pretty big swing. And a lot of the course on commons and uncommons here I got uh, as part of a, a brick. There was a card store in Houghton Lake, Michigan, so kind of in the middle of middle of the state. And they would take all the rares out of a box and sell the, the commons and uncommons in the empty booster box or in the uh, open booster box real cheap, probably 10 bucks. So I got a lot of good commons and uncommons, like this guy probably came from that. And nowadays, course on commons and uncommons are... Crazy expensive, so I was happy to get those for five to ten bucks back in the day. Corazon is still one of the most demanded sets. Cards like this, all wings report in, approaching hundred dollars. Another valuable card. Speak with the Jedi Councils. So pretty crazy that a lot of the interrupts from this set go for more than the premier characters do, like Luke and Vader. Nowadays, there's a lot better malls to use than this one. I suppose back when the game was out, there were two. Uh, back when the game was uh, in print, there were the Darth Maul with lightsaber and also the Tatooine Maul. This one, as far as I know, never got off the ground, but he does have pretty cool text and very neat image. Storage droids. Some valuable interrupts here. Imperial Artillery, the short range fighters combo. And this one's pretty wild. The fact that it allows you to get out this site, plus lets you go get effects, has made it a very, very useful card. It's hard to it's hard to make a deck sometimes without putting three or four copies in there, along with the flagship bridge. There's other ways to get activation, but it's uh, fairly easy to do and reliable. I got a couple of those in that common uncommon brick I bought. These are these are themselves uh, at least twice what I paid for the whole brick. Into Thieve now. So a couple of Admiral's orders. First one since Reflections 2. There weren't too many made, but some nice Episode 1 Admiral's orders. And I always liked the Bravo Squadron pilots. They had a lot of good text, especially at Naboo. And there might not be, at least putting your sets in alphabetic order by card type and then by card name, there might not be a better row in all of uh, in all of Star Wars CCG than that one there. Who knows, maybe when we get into the foils we'll see something, something a bit more interesting. But yeah, very neat page here. All the Naboo fighters. I remember playing uh, Battle for Naboo on N64, so Thede was one of my favorite sets just because I got to have all those different fighters. Unique battle droids with some pretty good text. Maul and Sidious together. I actually have that Maul double-sleeved. 
One of the only cards I double sleeved in my binder. It'd be a different story if they were in decks, my collection cards. Invasion is still one of my favorite objectives. There's now a virtualization that allows you to use destroyer droids instead of battle droids. Or at least makes it good to do so. I do wish there was a better way to use tanks in Invasion, but they add two battle destiny. And uh, lots of times when you flip the objective, you're drawing two if unable to otherwise, so it's it often doesn't help you that much to be able to draw two battle destiny. And I decided to put all the alternate images together rather than for each set. So uh, these are the Tatooine. And it's nice that there's nine of them. I'm sure that was on purpose because card pages were usually nines. There's the Coruscant AIs. A lot of valuable, hard to find cards there. And the feed ones. So maybe I'll use this as the still image for the for the video. <laughs> Just because, uh, yeah, very cool page to look at. And lots of times I selected some very, uh, very striking portraits for the alternate images, especially the mall. Rules cards. And now into Reflections 2. So this is out of chronological order, but um, Reflections 2. I always thought of it more as a premium set, not a main set, so that's why I have it after the the sets that chronologically came um, after that, after this set. But a lot of cool cards from Shadows of the Empire, which is a very fun game. Kind of hard to play nowadays. It's weird for me for me to play games where you're trying to aim uh, without the the other control stick. So I think you have to like hold down Z on the bottom of the controller to aim up or down, and it's kind of kind of tough. There was a little bit of auto aim, but yeah, playing those games, it's hard to get, get used to the aiming after more modern games made it a lot easier. Thrawn, another version of Mara. Being able to use him for Black Sun, so lots of expanded universe stuff that was pretty cool. And much easier to get Emperor than the Death Star 2 one. Not very good text, though. It's you know, if he's with Vader or Shizor, and so you have to get rid of Luke and get him with Vader or Shizor, who you'd like to, I think that's how you say Shizor, I'm not really sure. Um, and then that adds you two to attrition to, uh, against opponent at other locations. So your best character, one of your best characters, Vader, has to be with the Emperor in order to give you bonuses elsewhere. So that always seemed like a bit of a bummer, but it's better than having uh, no Emperor at all if you needed the Emperor in a deck. And Reflections 3 now, so a lot of cool characters with some Nebu politicians thrown in, but main characters. And you would get three three of these in every pack, So, and there was 100 different Reflections 3 premiums, so I guess the odds of getting any one card are, what, 1 in 33? Defensive Shields. I was kind of grumpy about these when they came out, but in retrospect, I think it made things a lot better. You couldn't just get blown out by one interrupt being played over and over again. Lightsaber combat, kind of more extended dueling. I have a few of those decks made, but they're not necessarily seriously competitive. A Boba, often called Broken Boba, being able to add two battle destinies with just that by happening to be with a bounty hunter or Vader, who you want him to be with anyways. Dark side shields. I do like that uh, that color teal or whatever it is. Just like the purple on the epic events. Lots of good effects to help different decks. And this is a definitely an interesting card because of the virtualization. It's a card easily over fifty bucks. I think it might be in the seventies now, but uh, the original version is is not very good. Doesn't do a whole lot, but the virtual version allows you to go search your force pile, take any one card out of it, then take any one card out of it, and then put two cards from your hand in there. So, very useful card. I have probably one in almost every dark side deck. 
just because there's so many good uses for it. Ah, tournament foils came next. So I did the tournament foils before the other set foils. And you can see here that they're foily. All with saber foil. And a lot of these are common or uncommon cards that look very cool when foiled. And I do have an Imperial class Star Destroyer. I got it a long time ago when I was trying to complete my sets, and I'm glad I did because it is hard to find them anywhere these days. I think I've only ever, I don't know if I've ever had a, a, a second one in my store to sell. I think I've only ever had that copy. Incredibly hard card to find. Reflections 1 foils, so from Premier to Special Edition, a lot of good cards got a foil version, which was nice because that means that you had more access to those cards. Often the best cards were foiled, so then you had, not to say twice as many copies, but another source to get the, the cards you wanted. I think it was a 114 card set, so I do have some some left over here. I always kind of liked it better when everything matched up in the page. Every, each set filled out the pages fully, but that wasn't always the case. That's a pretty good row itself. I mean, Dengar's there, but uh, two Vaders, the ultra rare and the super rare Vader, and the fact that he's a, a foil card and he's in the, in the chamber, the carbon chamber, definitely one of the cooler looking cards. And a lot of these cards weren't necessarily playable, but they looked cool as foils, so slip sliding away looks cool as a foil with the, the lights and the chute that Luke jumped down. And you might have seen earlier they made Reflection a foil, not necessarily a cool looking foil card, but hey, the name of it's Reflection, the name of the set's Reflection, so I think that was pretty much inevitable. Huh, empty sheet in there. Reflections 2 now, so this is a 100 card foil set with two ultra rares instead of one. I'm sorry, two ultra rares. Well, it isn't two per side. It's one light side and three dark side. So, a couple Lukes there in one line. And it is very risky opening Reflections 2 packs because, yeah, you can get good cards like Wedge or either of those two Lukes. But um, you can also get pretty much anything on this page, which is kind of a bummer if you're opening an $80 pack, especially if you don't get any decent premiums along with it. But... Lots of good starships you can get. For some reason, they never made a foil of the Defiance, one of the other. They made the foil of these three Moncomar Cruisers, but not of the Defiance, so that one's a bit harder to find. The Death Star 2 Defiance, because there's no other, there's no extra version of it. And these were box topper foils, so if you bought a booster box, you open it up, you'd see one of these on top in its own shrink wrap. And this is definitely a cool page. So you got the Emperor Ultra Rare, Lord Vader, and Mara Ultra Rare foils all on one page. Japanese Death Star and Death Star 2. Some cool starships. And Box Topper Boba, Case Topper Vader. So I believe he only came on a... So booster boxes came in a case of six. And those came in a big cardboard box. This will be on top of the case when you open the case. As far as I know, I've never actually opened a case of Reflections 2. But it'd be nice to go to a card store and they have one sitting in the back. That'd be, that'd be quite a day. So Reflections 3 now. Very fun packs to open. Lots of good cards you can get. It seems like a higher percentage of the foils are desired foils relative to Reflections 2. And it makes sense why they're the most expensive pack in the game. But the Super Rare Foils, a lot of them are really valuable and just cool cards. So Mace and Master Qui-Gon. That's one of the Ultra Rare Foils. And the other Ultra Rare Foil, 3PO. 3PO gets to be an Ultra Rare. Kind of a weird choice. Darth Maul Ultra Rare. And 
for some reason the ultra rare the other dark side ultra rare is p59 so definitely a cool card he's a destroyer droid captain or, or at least a leader but um yeah why why he was chosen as the ultra rare instead of i don't know thrawn or um i guess well they probably didn't want to make both malls ultra rares but thrawn might have made sense as an ultra rare he was a pretty co a pretty commonly sought after card but on the other hand, I mean, other than Maul, there's no no one really that obvious that would be would be make sense for being the marquee card. And a lot of cool foes here: Piro Artillery and Piro Command, Phantom Menace, alternate image foil. So anytime they do a foil of a hologram, it looks pretty cool. And then on the last page, uh, so for the most part, my binders are one of every card, but I always liked the Sense Tournament full, and I was able to get a bunch of them for cheap. And then the other one I really like is Snow Speeders. So I have a bunch of Snow Speeder Tournament foils, and those look pretty cool. So that is actually it for my uh, Master Set collection binders. I have a bunch more binders that I'll be going over in other videos here. But I hope you enjoyed seeing the, the main four binders in my collection and that you'll tune in for the next videos. Thanks for watching.